smell? No. No. Okay. that we uh, actually uh, that we studied with our time here at Mold. The first course that I'm going to talk to you about is the Facilitated Leader course. It's a very interesting course that uh, helped students with uh, various uh, different skills that was very useful in the workplace. Um, mostly we were working here with uh, improving co-worker communication and we also learned about how to, uh, how to solve issues you know, in a constructive and you know, you know, resolve conflicts without you know, creating uh, more problems. And once again, the, the, le the lessons that we learned here, they were very useful for students both in work and back home in their personal lives. The next workshop I want to talk to you guys about is the Concepts of Finance and Accounting course. Here it started off with, uh, with a basic grasp of your basic finance and uh, accounting skills. And then eventually over time it worked into giving students a very advanced grasp of these skills. Um, it was especially useful for managers and students, they individually, they found that um, a great takeaway from this was learning about NPV and uh, how their individual decisions made an impact on the company's bottom line. Now next up, I want to talk to you guys about some of our data collection methods, our uh, surveys, and our sample size. First off, we, uh, we, we submitted several optional multiple question surveys, starting with uh, we, where we rank uh, several criteria, or we rank several issues 
uh, from either being unsatisfactory with the zero or uh, you know excellent with the four. Additionally, we also had some short answer questions, so students could kind of give us some of their you know, specific feedback on certain issues. We had multiple options for students to take to uh, submit their participation or submit their uh, participation for these surveys. Most of our uh, most of our students actually submitted it through email. We actually did have a couple of them opt for telephone conversations, and even some of us uh, some of them recommended that we come in person and do a face to face conversation on site with them at home. Once we collected this data. We put it into uh, you know, one big Excel sheet, and using some of Frank Rostofiak's Excel skills he taught to us during class, we were able to uh, build conclusions, find trends in the data, and make recommendations. Here we have the uh, sample size with concepts of finance and accounting course. We had 26 students, 26 managers, and one instructor who were able to take the uh, survey. Of those, we had four students, one manager, and one instructor who actually uh, gave us data. For the facilitative leader course, we had 37 students, 37 managers, and one instructor. Of those, we had 12 students, three managers, and one instructor, or actually the instructor did not participate in this course. Uh, regardless of that, we had a total pool of 128 potential participants. And albeit that you know, we somewhat had a seemingly small sample size, we still do believe that our data is valid. We'll talk about our surveys. We had three different unique surveys depending on um, you know, your role within the course. Either you were a student, a manager, or an instructor. And each survey was tailor-made to, um, to give us unique perspectives, perspectives based on your role. For example, the managers, we would give them a course that would uh, help us, they would, they, where they would tell us, you know, the managers would recommend a student take the course, and then we would see whether, you know, they would tell us whether or not it actually helped. And then, obviously, we received some useful insight from participants. And now I'm going to pass off to Shannon, and she's going to talk about the values. Um, we had some communication barriers that were a definite problem. There was a lack of two-way communication between instructors and managers, or instructors and students, as well as students and managers. Um, there was no opportunity for feedback after sessions, which we thought was very peculiar, as this seemed to be one of the basic methods to get feedback and try to adapt and change their courses as needed. There was a dissimilarity of perceptions between, instru between instructors and students. Um, this could have been between whether or not the instructors thought that they were uh, conveying their material appropriately, and whether or not students actually felt that it was effectively taught, or if the material was challenging, interesting, or too difficult. Um, there's also a perceptional gap between managers and students. So here, managers are, as you're going to see in the next couple of slides, one of the most uh, referral method that is used for students to enroll in these classes. And if managers aren't receiving feedback from the students, they might be inappropriately recommending these classes to students that may have been beneficial for other members of their department. There was also conflicting nonverbal cues. Here you can see that there, uh, as you're going to hear in the future um, about conflicting cultural differences, but there was a different observed factor of use of Blackberry during, during classes, which was a definite communication barrier in presenting noise. And there was also different uh, observed levels of interest. And if a student found that was disinterested, they felt that they were less participative and they didn't get as much out of the class as they could have. As uh, Grace mentioned before, the Mo culture is something that really thrives Mo. What they focus on is they emphasize initiating and personal growth and development. And a lot of these uh, classes are aimed for personal growth and development. But because these classes were comprised of both Mo students from East Aurora, which is what we focused on, as well as Mo students from outside of East Aurora, whether that's Ohio or California, um, even a couple of them were from uh, other parts of the world. And there was also students that were in the classes that weren't even a part of MOG at all. They were from different organizations. Because each of these cultures presented different values, a lot of them clashed or had some conflicting, uh, that conflicting thoughts that uh, caused perceptual differences. And a lot of them also came from whether or not they were voluntarily taking the class, which most students from East Aurora were, most often, even though they were referred from managers. And those who were obliged to take the course, um, a lot of people from outside of the organization who were kind of having to take the course as part of the rules or regulations. As you can see from this graph, the quality of learning atmosphere, um, the blue is facilitative leader, and on average, they ranked it above average or average. And the reason for this that we found that those who ranked it average actually commented on the cultural differences and how that affected their learning atmosphere. And as you can see, for the concepts of finance and accounting, zero out of our entire data ranked it as exceptional. 
This presents a major problem, and it could be fixed, which Penang will talk about in the future. As you can see from this graph, um, the ma majority of both courses were referred to from managers, as well as colleagues. The Moog Learning Center is actually a database of one of three that, East, that Moog has implemented that has hundreds of records of different courses that are available, their descriptions, the instructor who teaches them, and how to contact them. Because the Moog Learning Center, no one, everyone we asked, no one had any idea what it was or how to use it. And this represents a definite communication breakdown between HR and the different departments. Continuing on, uh, Moog's organizational structure being so wide and flat of 10,000 employees all over the world, communication is inherently going to be a struggle. Um, this, there's different forms of the structure within each division, whether that was matrices within each one or whether it was just the, the wideness of the organization as a whole. And these communication uh, challenges definitely pose problems to getting employees to becoming aware of these courses and what they have to offer. Um, our final factor that we found that presented perceptual gaps between these is more like motivational factors. As mentioned yesterday in a group, motivation could be a factor of three. Uh, expectancy, instrumentality, and balance. If one of these three are missing, motivation is often lacking. What we found is that one or even two or more of these factors were missing, and motivation to take these courses was kind of a problem that needs to, that needs to be addressed. Um, as you can see from our surveys, we found that students didn't think that they could complete the class. This was especially true in finance, in concepts of finance and accounting. They heard from colleagues and through the informal communication networks that the material was very difficult. And without these, they also believed that the, the reward of completing the class wasn't valuable to them. In addition to this, uh, the facilitative leader course from the students that we surveyed indicated that they didn't think that the, the value of the material learned was very valuable, but they didn't think that the material was very transferable, at least immediately in their daily work life, which is what many of them expected from the beginning. And again, the concepts of accounting and uh, fi concepts of finance and accounting, their major problem was the material was very challenging. And lastly, the goal setting theory, theory was also played in here, where managers had annual meetings with their employees or students, but they didn't have biannual or weekly or informal meetings at all. And so students were going into these workshops with no focal goal. They didn't really talk about what they expected to get out of the course and what goals they had for the course, and therefore they didn't really have a focus going in there. And now I'm going to pass it over to Vinay, where he will talk about the prescriptions. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, so I'll be discussing about the prescriptions on based on the issues mentioned by Shannon, which are on communication barriers, organizational structures, and motivation factors. To start off with communication barriers, we believe every employee who's taken the course needs to take a compulsory survey. The employee along with the managers as well as the instructors needs to take the survey and give feedback. This will not only help the employee, uh, the instructor, but also make necessary changes to the courses, but also the manager and student can use this information to help future students who take the course. <clears throat> Next up, we would like to suggest that Every employee who's taken the course needs to take a survey six months after he's taken the course. The course questions can be based on like course material, teaching methods, perception of instructors, course expectations and implementation on future work, as well as classroom atmosphere. We would also suggest to include certain skip level meetings. Basically, the employee and the HR department can have a skip level and they can the HR department can have a direct feedback about the course. This would not only help they are improving the course, but also get direct feedback for the HR department. Also, the employee can have a feedback uh, skip level with his divisional vice president, which will actually analyze the effectiveness of the course work, which is in daily activities. As Shannon mentioned before, major uh, referral is through managers. So they really need to use other forms of communication, especially colleagues, emails, with the Moog Learning Center, and other forms of communication to break the communication barriers. Uh, part of the communication barrier was information overload and this was mainly prevalent in the concept of finance and accounting class. And solution to this would be to teach the basics of the class before the person actually enrolls in the concept of finance and accounting class. This would make the material thought in the class very effective. Also the perception of the material based on our survey results was boring, challenging as well as interesting. Which is like kind of contradictory and we would really suggest to use the feedback received from these Feed, uh, surveys to make the necessary changes. 
as we mentioned, the instructor needs to take a very proactive approach and research and understand the audience. And by doing a bicultural audit, he can actually do that and every class composition is not the same. He needs to understand that he needs to tweak teaching methods based on the composition of his class. And he also needs to include more icebreaker activities which focus on like mixing different cultures as well as viewing the strengths of other cultures. Uh, one of the major concerns during the classroom uh, activities were there was the employees felt they could not speak openly, which is a very big barrier in open communication. So we believe uh, to have a confidentiality agreement that whatever is spoken in the class is not leaked out and this would really enable open communication. Also, we believe to have a, uh, the instructor to abandon the one class, the one size fits all logic, which basically means every class is not the same, and hence he needs to tweak his uh, teaching methods based on the composition of the class done in the bicultural audit. He also considers the feedback received from the previous surveys received from the students who've taken the class. As Shannon mentioned before, the Moog Learning Center, people are not, none of the employees were aware of the Moog Learning Center, and that is the reason you see so high on the unsatisfactory and they need to really be made aware of the Moog Learning Center. The Moog Learning Center has actually hundreds of courses listed and they have actually spent millions of dollars on the Moog Learning Center. That is the, uh, they can do that by integrating the Moog Learning Center on the Moog intranet webpage. As Shannon mentioned, uh, Moog has acquired a lot of plants and sites across the nation and that's the reason they have a very different culture and a lot of communication barriers. Integrating different Moog divisions will not only enable uh, spread the Moog culture, but also help uh, cross-divisional communication. We also suggest to have bi-monthly meetings, which, not only which will add to the cost, but the benefits will surely outweigh the cost and the resources put in. Uh, as Shine mentioned before, uh, they have a problem. Uh, the problem is in immediate transferability of the skills learned in the class. We would really suggest, based on the surveys, the HR department and the instructors sit together and do the necessary changes and make the course material much more effective. Even the managers can uh, put some certain attainable goals as part of the performance review for the employees who've taken the course. As we've learned in Professor Zubek's class, positive reinforcement is something which really motivates the employees. Hence, we would encourage to have a performance reward connection wherein an employee who's taken the course will actually be rewarded for what he's learned in the class. As I mentioned before, a lot of employees preferred role-playing activities over theory because that's what is actually being used in the practical world and hence to include more role-playing activities. And the manager should continue to encourage his employees in personal development and have more feedback sessions with his teams. I would like to pass on to uh, Sparks for the conclusion. Thank you, Vinay. I'd like to wrap things up a little bit by talking about the conclusions that we found. First, we have uh, our, you know, talking about the biggest takeaways that students felt from the uh, facilitated leader course. As you can see, there, were, there was a range, of, great range of benefits, something from leadership, communication, culture, preparation. Uh, in terms of the concepts of finance and accounting course, we actually didn't even have to make a graph about that one because it was unanimous. Each student felt that learning about NPV and their individual impact on the company's bottom line was their biggest takeaway from that class. Next up, we have a slide just talking about the overall satisfaction of each student, depending on whether they're in the concepts of finance and accounting class or the facilitated leader course. We, created, uh, we, had them, we had them rate their courses based on how interesting the course was, how easy it was to learn the, the course material, how knowledgeable they felt their instructor was, as well as the quality of the learning atmosphere. They, uh, once again, they rated from a one being unsatisfactory to a four being excellent. And as you can see, which, with most of our scores between 2.5 and 3.0 ratings, there's definitely some room for improvement. And I definitely believe, we definitely believe, that once they take our uh, recommendations and prescriptions into account that they're definitely going to see an increase in the score here. I'd just like to wrap things up and thank you very much for uh, taking the time to listen to our presentation today. In your picture we have uh, the group of us four along with our mentor at Mo. and one of, the, uh, one of the quotes that we pulled from uh, our in-person interviews was live for today, prepare for tomorrow, and never look back. Once again, thank you and if anyone has any questions, I welcome you to come forward with that. Considerations, students may still be afraid. 
So basically, the thing is, uh, the students and the managers mean to say like students and managers having been in the same course. That was not the case. It was only the managers referring the students okay. about the course. So the con thing of confidentiality was other team members and people from different plants as well. Okay, my misunderstanding. Sorry. Um, for the survey you administered, you said it was voluntary. Um, was it, what, did you sort of like drop it off and let people fill it out, or how was that administered? I guess. Actually, we have three methods to do the survey: uh, either phone call, or face-to-face -face interview, or email. It's flexible according to their comfortability. Oh. Okay. I was just wondering if you could like make it compulsory or something. <laughs> what were the jobs that these people were in that they were going to the classes? Actually, it, 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 there was a complete range. Actually, so there each um, there's a group of like there's a lot. Okay, Moog, Moog is a large company. There's a, many different divisions within Moog. So you'd either either be in space and defense, you'd be in um, you know you work in the finance sector. Um, there's a great range, and actually, all these courses, you know, prove to be useful regardless of what division you were in. So, would some of them already have a finance and accounting background, or would all of them? Actually, yeah, some of the people who are going into these courses are, especially the concepts of finance and accounting, they already had some background knowledge. But um, one of the main things that one of the main benefits of that course is that it gets really advanced with, um, you know, how uh, they teach you the concepts. And um, I mean, once again, some people just want a refresher from time to time as well. Do you think there would be any difference between the people who had a background and who didn't, and like interested in the class? I, I definitely, I definitely think that's uh, definitely a, one of the factors. Because what we found from our feedback, especially from short answer ones, in the concepts of finance and accounting, that a, a lot of the people who were, uh, I mean, weren't maybe as adept to learning the knowledge, they they lost interest quickly because the, the course goes from basic to advanced uh, at a quite rapid pace. But a high proportion of the employees are engineers. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's all. The name talked about <clears throat> icebreakers and other ways to break down some of the cultural barriers. I guess, what do you think that would look like? And do you think that would be embraced right off the bat from their employees, or do you think that would take a little while? To See, get the thing is, in? our main focus for, uh, was on the East Aurora plant, where it employs 2,100 employees out of the 10,000 employees across the globe. And the Mo culture is actually prevalent in the East Aurora plant. When it actually comes, the problem is when people from different plants actually come for training. Uh, so what we suggested is to mix various cultures where people could introduce themselves and they could like look at uh, the positives of other people. They are getting the knowledge, the culture from different states and this would really help to um, spread the more culture and help uh, integrate the class more. <laughs> My question was kind of a follow-up follow to that one. Um, to integrate their culture, I don't know how much they, they move employees around or how mode works in terms of that. Did, did they change people around a lot? Would that be one way to help to integrate cultures across different states or different plants to say, okay, we're going to transfer for you here for six months or a year or something along those lines? Um, there is interdepartment movement. Most of it, once they stay there, they're kind of in their sector of what they're comfortable with. But a lot of what we found was the cultural differences were a result of different companies being acquired by Mo who haven't had time to assimilate. So it's not necessarily the cultural differences within Mo where they can change divisions, but it might even help sending someone from East Aurora maybe for a couple months trying to implement the Mo East Aurora culture into those uh, in Ohio or the recently acquired companies even in other countries. The, the trainers for these two courses, what are they? Train full-time trainers, or did they have another job and come in and do the training for the particular topics? Um, they had, they were also employees at Mo. They weren't full-time trainers. Um, they were both over ten years of experience taking uh, control of the course and really teaching it at Mo, which is why we only had a sample of two, one for each course. Um, but they had different roles in Mo. Some were in space and defense and. They recommended their courses to their employees versus others that were recommended to them. Did you guys have some sort of conversation within your group when you saw that the response rate wasn't as robust as you would have liked? And what was that conversation like? <laughs> 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 
guess. <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, we, we had a couple issues, um, you know, administrating uh, the surveys because we were on completely wrong. We were on the completely wrong track, uh, you know, late into the semester. So um, they had about a week to uh, participate in the surveys, and um, we just gave it up to the HR department. They just sent out some emails and contacted everyone. We also got a list of phone numbers. We did, we did our best to get as many as we could, but um, despite that, we still find that our data is valid because a lot of students came to the same conclusions on each class. They all felt like, oh, this went into syllabus, or it would be a lot more interesting if um, you know, this course was more tailored you know, to each student rather than just a blanket uh, course. Cool, thanks. Time for one more question. I am. You, the, the post questionnaire, the assessment, the training assessment tool that you showed, you said something about giving it again six months later. And when I looked at it, I wondered, why would you ask some of those same questions six months later, like questions about the instructor, you know, uh, questions about the content? Those seem like something that you'd want to know more immediately as a, as a kind of a feedback mechanism for fixing the course. But wouldn't you want six months later something more like an, a performance appraisal to see if there's a difference? Um, we have considered that, which is uh, partly the reason why we gave them a survey directly after the course, right. just trying to get the manager feedback. But we also felt and found from our surveys that students who took the course six months later kind of thought back on their experience, and they kind of changed their perceptions of oh, what, okay. how effective the course was, because what we found is that people were able to implement what they learned in the course longer on. It was definitely not an immediate impact, because what they learned was so personal that it was hard for them to change their behaviors immediately. So it changed the behaviors further on, and that's why we kind of asked the same question. That's the, that's the famous OB sleeper effect. Yes. <laughs>